Hey there, Brits. So, it's been a while since I've given you a video that's, you know, all nice and production quality-like. So, I thought I'd go on ahead and use cell organelles as my opportunity to do one. So, what are the cell organelles? What, what is their purpose? What do they do? Well, the cell organelles are much like your own organs inside of your body. That's why they're called the organ organelles. And they serve different functions for the cell just like your organs do. You have a stomach to help you break down food. You have intestines to help you absorb said food and the nutrients that you need. You have a brain to operate all of the stuff that's going on here. Tell my hand to flip up and down like this, right? So the cell has a lot of the same things. In fact, the nucleus of the cell is very similar to the brain of a human individual or a brain in general. Brain controls all of your functions and the nucleus controls all of your functions. So the organelles are really just the parts of the cell that run all of its functions. Now, what is one of the major differences between, say, an organ and an organelle? Well, organs are made up of cells, but the organelles themselves, well, they're made up of membrane-like materials, much like the plasma membrane you've already learned about. Um, so they're not necessarily made of cells. They are made up of smaller things in the cell. And remember, something like 10,000 cells can fit on the head of a pen. So think about how small, absolutely tiny, these little organelles are. So that's really the main difference between the two. They still carry out functions for their larger organism or their larger unit, the cell. What are these organelles and what do they do? Well, that's exactly what I'm about to get into. What I'm about to do, and this bears explanation because you're going to do the same thing, is I'm going to give you some analogies. An analogy is a comparison to something that's similar to help you understand what the new thing is. So if I were to sit there and say that the nucleus operates like the king of a castle, I'm the king. Ah, 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 ah. Well, that gives you an idea that the nucleus is out there telling other things what to do. Kings are also great at storing wealth and information. And in fact, they're the main uh, information uh, holder for the kingdom, right? If it doesn't come out of the king's mouth or from the king's desk, um, it's not the law, it's not the rule, it's not the whatever, right? There's been plenty of kings out there that have murdered plenty of uh, ancient scientists back in the day, uh, Galileo and all of them, for having knowledge that wasn't approved by the king. And, well, the nucleus is all about telling the whole cell what to do. You were. You must obey my commands. <laughs> and it has all of the information that the cell can use to reference later on. So you guys and gals will be creating your own analogies for each of the organelles. Now you can't use the ones I'm about to give you, but you can use the information that you get from this video to help you create your own. One of the first organelles that you've already learned about is the plasma membrane. Now the plasma membrane acts like the castle walls of the kingdom. It has doors and gates of all varying sizes and it has different uh, guards and things stationed along the outside to allow certain things in and keep certain things out. It's there to act as the main line of defense for the cell. It's also there to kind of keep things from flowing out that the king doesn't want flowing out. So if the king doesn't want all of his royals or all of his farmers or whoever to leave the kingdom all at once, well, he can shut the gates and keep them in there. And the plasma membrane basically serves as that function. What about ribosomes? Well, ribosomes are some of the most important organelles to the cell. They're the organelle that goes out and creates all the proteins that the cell needs to carry out all of its functions. What a great day to be a ribosome. Let's make some proteins. Proteins are basically all of the different chemicals the cell can use to make certain things happen. And the cell can create more than 10,000 different proteins um, from only a handful of ingredients, really two handfuls of ingredients. It's about 20 different amino acids to create these things. Um, so ribosomes are very important. They act really like the builders or engineers um, of your kingdom inside your castle. And the king will come along and say, Ribosome, I need this right now, as soon as you can, so I can send this message to the neighboring kingdom. And the ribosome will go hard at work and do exactly that. It will make the proteins necessary uh, to carry out the king's command. 
the nucleus's commands. The endoplasmic reticulum is a fairly difficult word to say, and, but it's fun once you get the hang of it. Endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum. Anyways, the endoplasmic reticulum is actually two separate organelles. You have the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or the rough ER, and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or the smooth ER. They both have separate functions, even though they are generally located very near each other in the cell, and they look fairly similar themselves. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is all about the manufacture of proteins. Now, I did tell you that ribosomes are all about making proteins. And when you look at the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum, you will notice that there are tiny little ribosomes all over it. And that's why it's called the rough ER, because it has a rough appearance, all these little tiny dots all over the outside of it, kind of like it has a bad case of acne. Now, the rough ER makes the more complicated proteins. See, when you look at an endoplasmic reticulum, it's folded a lot, lots and lots and lots and lots of folds in time inside of this tiny little package. And what's happening there is the ribosomes in the endoplasmic reticulum are slowing down the path of the molecule that they're trying to create. And it has to go through these multiple folded layers. And this gives the ER, the rough ER, the time it needs to make some really complicated proteins. Because remember, your proteins can be anything from, you know, several hundred amino acids put together to several million. So proteins can get really, really, really complex and complicated. And as a result, they take a lot longer to make. The rough ER is a lot like your specialized builders or your specialized engineers. So you've got your general engineers who can make some simple things and for the most part are fairly useful for a lot of your more simple projects. But then you have those types of engineers like chemical engineers who are very specialized at making or doing very tough and difficult things. I'm the rough ER. I've got the brain. And the brawn. <laughs> and that is essentially what the ER is functioning as. It's, it's a very complicated engineer, or an engineer of complicated things. So it makes proteins. That's what it does. But what about the smooth ER, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? What does it do? Well, Unlike the rough ER, it's not involved in making proteins, but it is involved in making other things. In fact, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the organelle that's responsible for creating things like carbohydrates and fats and your other macromolecules. Different molecules that are needed that aren't proteins, essentially. So what about the lysosome? Well, the lysosome serves two main functions. It's the waste disposal mechanism for the kingdom. You know, whenever there's some bodies that need to be taken out due to the plague, and he knows how to get rid of them. Bring out your dead! <laughs> Bring out your dead! Bring out your dead! Bring out your dead! But he's also the assassin for the king. Anytime something needs to be taken out, well, he sends the lysosome out to uh, handle the problem. Here's what I mean. If there's a virus or a bacteria invading the cell, the lysosome will come along, totally open up and digest it, and break it down with its enzymes inside, killing the virus or killing the, the bacteria. If there's an old endoplasmic reticulum or an old ribosome that's not doing so well, well, the lysosome will sneak up behind it and get rid of it. Lysosomes? Where is my lysosome? Yes, my liege. Ah, there you are, lysosome. We have an issue with the uh, Golgi apparatus. It's getting a little gray in the hair, if you're catching my meaning. My messages have been rather slow getting out lately. I think you know how to handle it with pleasure. <laughs>
Those are the cell organelles and some analogies to kind of help you understand what their function is. What I want you to do next is put together your own set of analogies. Now you can't use the same analogies that I just used. You need to come up with your own and you need to come up with analogies for each of the cell organelles including the chloroplast which I didn't give you an example of because well it's fairly straightforward and I think you'll figure it out. They can either all be around one central analogy, like what I did with my kingdom, or they can just be random individual analogies that only work for that one organelle. I don't care either way. So if you don't want to say, well, a cell's like a city, and then this part of the city is this, you don't have to do that. If you just want to say, hey, um, chloroplasts are like solar panels, hey, boom, you got it, right? In this new project, I want you to come up with your own analogies, because number one, if you can come up with analogies, that will help you better understand the material, and it will also help you better communicate your knowledge of said material. Analogies are really powerful when you're trying to communicate new ideas to other people. So it's a good uh, skill to practice coming up with them. Now, obviously, I want your project to look good, so there's going to be some style points involved, and we obviously aren't all in a classroom together, but you can find most of the things you need lying around the house to create this. You can either do a digital presentation or you can do a physical presentation. If you go the physical route, you get five extra credit points. That's because creating something physical is much more difficult generally than simply finding some photos and stuff and slapping it on a Google slide and turning it in. So, um, yeah, I think that's a good enough way to, to cap this off. Cell organelles. Your cell organelle analogy project. It's gonna be great. I don't mind this. I've got the brain. I'm just a lonely apparatus. I'll send this letter to the king. He wants me to send it off to the nearby kingdom. It's gonna be great. Go, king. Top of that. Send letters. Yeah. Go, king. Apparatus. Send things. Yeah. Golden apparatus. Golden apparatus. Send messages. Yeah. Golden apparatus. Golden apparatus. You see this right here? This is my message. The king told me to send it. Golden apparatus. I've got a letter. And I'm going to send it away. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.